The new MacBook Air with Apple Silicon is great, except for it's missing one key thing, and that's a touchscreen. Now, whether or not you believe that a touchscreen is necessary on a clamshell laptop like this, keep in mind that Apple is supporting iPad apps on this, and the experience of using an iPad app with a touchpad is just not great, and I would much prefer actually having a dedicated touchscreen to do so. And so I came up with a couple ideas to, to get there. And I was thinking today we'd walk through them and see if they're viable options. Let's get started. So the first idea that I had was pretty simple, and that is remoting in using an iPad. I'm going to try two different services here, but there are a lot of different ways to remote into your MacBook. I'm just going to try a couple to see what the experience is like. So I'm gonna start with Chrome Remote Desktop. Okay, now we're in. Let's see how touch support works. Um, okay, this is not working as expected. Come on. Okay, these uh, touching on this screen doesn't really work. Um, yep. Yeah, okay, this isn't gonna work. Let's try. Let's try Team Viewer instead. Maybe that will give us better results. This does not look great. Let me turn up the brightness so it's easier to see. Yeah, it is. Um, the resolution is not great. Maybe there's a pro version that would be a better experience. Oof. And there does seem to be a bit of latency. Let's go ahead and open up Monument Valley 2. Track my characters. Okay, there's a little bit of latency between when I click and it actually goes. And the resolution is horrible, but... So I'll rotate, let's see, I'll rotate, ooh. Okay, the swiping is, the swiping is not great. And the click is not very accurate. Now I can rotate back. So this works. It's not the it's not the best experience. And now let's try LumaFusion. Yep, so this is a video that I that I edited a little while ago. Yep, it is um it is not super crisp. I wouldn't particularly recommend this, and it looks like there is a decent amount of latency. So you can see on the iPad, sometimes it doesn't actually move. It looks like it's compressing to save uh, to save bandwidth. Whereas on the MacBook, it is actually scrolling properly, scrubbing properly. So probably not the best experience. So if you absolutely need touch on your MacBook, then you can remote in using an iPad, but I obviously wouldn't recommend it based on the quality. I'm sure there's other folks that have remoted into their MacBooks to use touchscreen as well. So the next idea that I have for adding touch to your MacBook is actually an idea that I got from an Unbox Therapy video that I watched back in like 2017 or 2018. You see, he actually unboxed and looked at this product called the Air Bar, which I thought was a really interesting product because it added touch to your MacBook. Granted, at the time I was using Windows laptop, so it didn't really matter to me. But let's see if it works for the MacBook Air. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like these are available on Amazon anymore. You might be able to get them from other retailers, but um, they're unfortunately all sold out on Amazon the last time I checked. Get touchscreen for your 13.3 inch MacBook Air. Granted, this is probably the old, old model, not the most recent model of MacBook Air. It looks like there's just magnets in the box, so I could basically uh, magnetize this to my MacBook Air, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, updating the firmware on your Air Bar for MacBook Air sensor. Um, okay, it's not showing up. Okay, maybe I try something different. Install support for multi-finger touch with MacBook Air. Program has updated system extensions signed by TouchBase. To finish the update, you must approve it. Let's go ahead and approve it. To enable system extensions, you need to modify your security settings in the recovery environment. Let's, let's give that a shot. So obviously we're changing the MacBook Air security policy, so I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you are aware and ready for any possible consequences. So we'll go into startup options, options, continue. Um, utilities, startup security utility. Select the system you want to use as security policy, Macintosh HD. Okay, reduce security, here we go. Allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. And all this for a touchscreen. 
For being a really fast computer, this is really taking a lot longer than I expected. Here we go. System software developer touch base has been updated. Let's click the lock. Yep, we'll allow for that. A restart is required before new system extensions can be used. So let's go ahead and restart again. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, this time it's going to work. I know it. This air bar is going to work and I'm not going to have wasted whatever 60 or 70 bucks on it. I don't know which way this needs to go. I imagine it goes the other way, but it doesn't look like Mac OS is really noticing it at all. So let's go back to system preferences and see if we even see air bar in there. Still no air bar. Are you air barring yet? I, I don't know what to do with this. So let me see one more thing. So I know that if this was Windows, I would go into the device manager and then look to see if I see this as connected as a USB device. Okay, so I'm going into system report. I'm looking in the hardware information. Here's the USB information. There's two 3.1 buses, which are these two ports. And despite being connected to the air bar, it's not showing up in this device tree. So I don't know why. So the MacBook isn't even recognizing the air bar as a device. I'm going to try a different USB dongle. This is just the hyperdrive. This isn't actually the air bar. So it doesn't say anything connected to the air bar, bar I don't think. Okay, so I reached out to Neonode, the makers of air bar, and I asked them why this was happening. And they said that the air bar is not supported on the MacBook Air M1 or any of the new MacBooks with USB-C ports. And so unfortunately this is not going to be a solution, at least an official solution, but let's move on to my next solution. Okay, so my last idea actually came from me adding touch screens to my Windows devices, like my desktop computer, and that's an actual touch screen monitor. Now, this is the only touch screen monitor that I have, and it's a pretty large 15 inch touch screen monitor that I got for really cheap. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the most elegant solution. Um, and probably a 13 inch model would be better if I can even get this to work at all, but we'll see if I can get it to work in the first place. The USB port on the side of the MacBook and no dice. One thing I have found is this thing can be a little bit finicky if it's not getting its own power. So let's power this device as well. Hey, look, the screen brightened when I did that. Okay, still no signal. So let's try connecting to this via a just HDMI connection. Okay, now the, the display signal is transferred over the HDMI. Let's try plugging in the USB-C port, which will hopefully just send the touch signal. <sighs> Come on. Okay. Okay, I was sure this is gonna work because it's just a touch controller that sends a signal to the MacBook Air that should be just read as like a mouse input. So let's troubleshoot again by doing the same thing as before and seeing if we can see the USB device connected to the MacBook Air. USB. Okay, USB 3.1 device, 2.0 hub. I don't, okay. I think this might be the 2.0 billboard. This one's generic billboard device and, ooh. All right, this one's interesting, okay. I don't know if y'all can see that. You might have to get nice and close. This says multi-touch. Multi-touch by G2SP. So it's recognizing the USB device, but it's just not taking any of the touch input, so let's Okay, so this looks like it says manufacturer G2 Touch. So let's just look up G2 Touch drivers. Let's look at the company. So it's G2 TSP. Mac multi-touch driver, new line interactive support desk. Okay, now maybe? No, identify? There has to be a solution here. Okay, how to enable touch on Mac devices. C Touch Help Center, let's try this one. Driver, UPD driver suite for Windows, Mac OS. Okay, drivers, install. Okay, automatic identification. 
To identify the touch device connected to your system, download and run the USB device and identification utility. So this hopefully will identify this device and then figure out what touch driver is needed. All right, this might be tough to see, but what we have is this universal installer. And then it basically asks me to pick from a list and then give them contact information so that they can send me the driver. Such a bizarre process, but so I know that I have a G2 touch based on what it said in the USB information. So I'm gonna select G2 touch and then I'll type in my name and information and hopefully they send me a driver soon. Okay, I just got an email. It says, based on your request for a UPD driver, please find your UPDD software version link below. This link will be active for seven days. Okay, so I'm gonna install it now. If installing in Big, Big Sur for the first time, read this document. Okay, what this is saying is I need to go into the Mac OS recovery environment and then go to the startup security utility and then select reduce utility and allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers. So this is exactly what I had just done with the, um, the air bar. And so I don't think I'm going to need to do this, but if you're doing this from scratch, keep in mind that you're going to need to do this. So now with the, the new driver, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Okay, system software from developer Touchbase has been updated. Let's go ahead and allow it. Okay, it looks like my monitor is connecting back via USB-C, so I don't know if that's gonna cause any issues. Okay, it looks like a couple touch things are showing up in the top. Let's see if it works, come on. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, wait a second. Yes! Oh my gosh, yes! Oh wow, okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You're not even able to see this. Let's go ahead and turn this towards the camera so it's a little bit easier to see for y'all. Let's open up Monument Valley. Oh, come on, it's opening, it's opening, give it time. All right, let's, let's play. Maybe there's some rotation. Oh, there's some rotation in this level, so hopefully we'll be able to see how good the swiping is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go over here. Let's rotate. Oh, wow, that's not bad. That is not too bad. Wow, okay, great. Okay, yep, rotate. We'll go over these folks over there and then swipe. Not bad. Wow, okay, Monument Valley is working. Touch screen on a MacBook Air. Like, you might have seen this coming. Like, this is, this is, I think this is so cool. I think this is awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and Let's get them around. Let's rotate them over here. I think we might have to go back down. Yep, okay, there we go. Now what I wanna try, it's kind of it's kind of dumb, but what I wanna try is putting this in front of the MacBook Air to just try and experience like a touchscreen laptop. It's gonna look dumb. Please forgive me for that. I've disguised the MacBook Air behind this touchscreen, but you can see it in the other shot. There we go, okay. It's not, terrible with the touchpad it's 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 not it's okay oh oh it dropped with the click it's just it's just a little bit using the touchpad is just a little uncomfortable and the um the touchscreen feels a little more natural for me it's also nice that i have some extra screen safe space maybe i will instead optimize again for the uh the wide screen because it looks a little awkward right now Okay, so like clockwork, my other camera has run out of battery, so I'm going to tr try and show this to you live. Let me see if I can unplug the power cable. Okay, unpower unplugging the power cable is not the right move. Wait. Oh! Okay, we're still, we're still good. Okay, unplugging the power cable is okay. The screen seems to get a little bit darker. Okay. Don't need my iPad anymore. And we'll go ahead and open, uh, we'll open LumaFusion. We're in LumaFusion and we've got a video here. Let's see if we can scroll along it. That's not bad. That's pretty good. So we're scrubbing in LumaFusion using the touchscreen, which I just plugged into the MacBook Air. All right, obviously this isn't the best solution. It's clunky. Obviously the MacBook Air is now very heavy with this added screen, but this screen is impressively small. This is the screen and it has the included touch panel. Now, granted this rock space, I'm not sure if I could find it again. 
I think it was made by the maker Boss Touch, but it's tough to tell. I, I looked at random Amazon listings to try and find something similar, but this is very thin and just carrying the MacBook around with this is not that bad of a solution. And I'm surprised at how well it works. Now, granted, the resolution, this is 1080p, and it's very washed out. I don't know if you can tell that. It is really washed out, and it doesn't look nearly as beautiful as the MacBook Air's display. I might get a 13-inch touchscreen that fits better on the footprint so it doesn't like hang off the edges or anything. So let me punch out again because I feel like I'm a little squished here. Just a second. Okay, so the question we set to answer today was, can you add a touchscreen to the MacBook Air? And we started with a couple solutions. First, we started with remote remoting in, and we used Chrome remote, remote Desktop, which wasn't working too well because the touch accuracy wasn't great. The second thing we tried to do was using TeamViewer, and the resolution was really bad, though it did technically work. And then we started, then we tried the Air Bar. And no matter how hard I tried, I just could not get the air bar to work. So again, if you know how to get this to work, or if you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments, and I'd love to get this working to have a little bit more um, clean of a solution. And then the last thing I tried was a touchscreen display. Now this touchscreen display was is a relatively cheap one, and it's definitely not the right size for the MacBook Air, but it works um, with a couple tweaks. But yeah, as far as performance goes, I'm really impressed with how good the experience is. Thank you for watching in OISO. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to get subscribed because we've got another one coming up really soon where we compare the MacBook Air against a real touchscreen device like the Surface Pro X. So if you're not already, subscribe for that. Make sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of this solution, and I'll catch you in the next one.